Since the mid 1960 intravesenal steroid injection have gained popularity as one of the most common approaches to attenuate hypertrophic scar and calloid formation. Two or three injections of triamcinolone acetonide or TAG 10 to 40 mg per milliliter are usually sufficient also occasionally injections continue for six months or more. Importantly, when used alone, intralesional corticosteroid injection have the most effect on younger calloids and younger calloids. Injections may be used alone or combined with other therapies of which the combination with cryotherapy or surgery are the most widely used modalities. Side effects include, include dermal atrophy, teleangiogenia, and pain at the uh, site of injection. TAC remains first-line therapy for the treatment of early calloids and second-line therapy for the treatment of early hypertrophic scars if other easier treatments have not been efficient. Cryotherapy has been used as monotherapy and in conjunction with other forms of treatment for excessive scars. In particular, combination of cryotherapy with intralesional TAC injections seems to yield marked improvement of hypertrophic scars and keloids. We recommend cryotherapy directly before the administration of intralesional TAC injections since success rates appear to be increased. Success rates in general of studies using contact or spray cryosurgery with liquid nitrogen vary between 32% and 74% after two or more sessions with high response rate of hypertrophic scars compared to the one of calloids. A delay of several weeks between sessions is usually required for post-operative healing and the commonly occurring side effects including permanent hypo and hyperpigmentation Moderated skin atrophy, blistering and post-operative pain represent a major handicap. More and more lasers with different wavelengths have been studied for excessive scarring, with varying success. Until today, the most encouraging result have been obtained with the 585 nm pulse dye laser which has been recognized as an excellent therapeutic option for the treatment of younger hypertrophic scars and primarily calloids. Non-overlapping laser pulses as fluences ranging from 6.0 to 7.5 to, to um, square centimeter or from 4.5 to 5.5 to per um, uh, centimeter um, the treatment of hypertrophic scars and calloids. Two to six treatments may be necessary to successfully improve scar resolution, including scar color, height, and texture. Adverse effects include transient hyper or hypopigmentation and blistering. Surgical excision remains a traditional treatment for calories and hypertrophic scars. However, it is imperative to clearly differentiate between hypertrophic scars and calories before starting any surgical manipulations. In case of hypertrophic scars, timing of surgical treatment is an important consideration in the treatment protocol of scar revision strategy. Scars major over at least a one-year period and can show decrease of contractures, flattening, softening and repigmentation without any physical manipulation. Surgical excision might thus be not needed, even though post-excisional uh, excisional recurrence rate of the original hypertrophic scar are usually low. Recurrence rates of calories after excision, in contrast, range between 45% and 100%. Given this high recurrence rate, surgical intervention without adjuvant therapy, such as post-excisional corticosteroid injections or radiations should be considered with caution. Excision may be frequently result in a longer scar than the original calloid and recurrence in this new area of trauma may lead to an even larger calloid. Surgical repair of illop calloids with corticosteroid injections and post-operative pressure on the incision side, however, usually provide good cosmetic results. 
Electrobeam irradiation is utilized as adjuvant um, after calorie excision and usually started 24 to 48 hours after surgery. So total dose is limited to 40 g up over several administrations in order to prevent side effects such as hypo or hyperpigmentation, erysema, teleangiectasia and atrophy. Since radiation represents a potential risk in terms of carcinogenesis, particularly in areas such as the breast or thyroid, its use should be handled with, ca with caution. Emergent therapies um, include the use of 5-FU and uh, interferon. 5-FU has been used since 1999 uh, in combination or as sole agent for the treatment of keloids and has been shown to be effective. 5-FU is administered weekly intralesionally. Side effects include pain, ulceration and burning sensation. Intralesional 5-FU treatment has also been used for the treatment of inflamed hypertrophic scars and appears to be both effective and safe. Specifically, interferon has been proposed to have antiproliferative properties and may improve the pathologic features of dermal fibrosis directly or by antagonizing the effects of TGF-beta. Interferon alpha 2 beta admin administered intralesional um, was found to result in a 50% reduction of keloid size by 9 days. Unfortunately, adverse effects are common with interferon treatment and include flu-like symptoms and pain on the injection. Also, interferon, interferon repre represents an expensive form of therapy. It remains a promising therapeutic approach in the management of the excessive scars. In conclusion, scarring, falling surgery or injury is difficult to predict and both physicians and their patients are highly concerned with minimizing scar appearance and value even small improvements in scarring as clinically uh, meaningful. Despite a plethora of various in vivo and vitro studies, to date only little information is available on the exact cause of hypertrophic scar and calorie formation. However, a certain genetic susceptibility, a prolonged inflammatory period and the role of TGF-beta are currently being discussed as major underlying factors of excessive scar formation. Existing prophylactic and therapeutic strategies include pressure therapy, silicone gel sheeting, intralesional TAC, cryosurgery, radiation, laser therapy, interferon, 5-FU and surgical excision, as well as a multitude of extracts and topical agents. Many of them have been proven through extensive use, but few have been supported by well-designed prospect studies with adequate control groups. Emergent therapies support earlier intervention in excessive scar-prone patients by modulating single cell types, inflammatory metabolites, cytokines or signaling receptors. With encouraging results, using recombinant human TGF-beta-3 or anti-TGF-beta-1 and 2, substantial optimism for new solutions to difficult fibrotic disorders in the future has been provided. Thank you very much.